Hi, my name is David Kelsey, and uh, this is uh, <clears throat> a lecture on, a video lecture on uh, what's called the argument from evil. And uh, the argument from evil is an argument against the existence of God. And the argument goes like this, according to J.L. Mackey, uh, the Australian philosopher. Uh, he gives this argument, and his argument goes, first, God is omnibenevolent. And uh, omnibenevolence means uh, holy goodness. Right? So God is said to be holy or maximally good, right? perfectly good. Then what Mackey tells us is that any omnibenevolent being prevents evil as far as he or she is able. Right? So what Mackey means here is that if, if God was really good, then God would do everything in God's power to stop evil in, uh, occurring in the universe. Right? Third, then, Mackey says God is omnipotent. And of course, omnipotence is... Uh, maximum power, right? And so uh, what, what Mackey actually tells us is that any omnipotent being, any maximally powerful being, is, uh, has the power to prevent all evil, right? So God, of course, has the power to stop all evil in the world because God is maximally powerful, right? But then fifth, right, and this premise actually follows from the first four, right? If you take it that God's omnibenevolent and that God's omnipotent, and then you take these definitions of omnipotence and omnibenevolence that you know, Mackey has provided us, it seems to follow that if God exists, a God that's omnipotent and omnibenevolent, then there couldn't be any evil. This is, of course, because according to Mackey, right, God has the power to prevent all evil and also, of course, the desire to. Right? So if God exists, there's no evil, according to Mackey. But, so says Mackey, evil does exist. It is real. Right? Now, we have to be careful before we move forward to make sure we understand what evil is. So evil, of course, we would say just kind of generally or theoretically is, is pain or suffering, harm done. Right? And uh, we would say uh, we can define evil in two different forms. Right? The first is called moral evil. Moral evil is uh, evil done, harm done, pain done by the hands of a person, a person with intent uh, to, to cause that harm, right? So, for example, any kind of um, murder or kidnapping or torture, you know, something like the Holocaust, for example, these would be moral evils, right? And then secondly, though, there is, there is evil that's not really done by the hands of a human being, by the hands of a person, right? For example, uh, a, a hurricane or an earthquake, right? And these are what we call natural evils. Natural evils are just evils that pain that is not caused by any, any person. And so you have, again, examples like earthquakes, but also even examples like disease, like cancer, right, would be considered to be a natural evil. So, the idea is that, of course, um, with premise 5 here, we have the claim that if God exists, then there cannot be evil. But then, of course, Mackey asserts that there is evil in the world. Just, just sort of look around and you, and you see it everywhere. So then Mackey thinks that it follows, of course, that God does not exist. Right? <clears throat> and so this is the famous argument from evil. And so the conclusion of this argument is that there is no God. And how could there be? Because there's evil. Right? Now, there are many, many possible and quite reasonable replies to this argument, right? And uh, first, we could quite simply deny God's omnipotence, right? Maybe just simply, quite simply, God isn't omnipotent. He isn't all-powerful. And maybe the point is, is that that's not even a possibility, not, not merely for God, but for anything or anyone. It's just omnipotence itself is not possible. And so this is suggested to us by what's called the paradox of omnipotence, right? And we, we can, uh, you know, for example, consider something just quite simple to suggest the paradox of omnipotence. So consider, for example, <clears throat> whether God could create a rock or something that he himself could not even lift. Right? This is an example of the paradox of omnipotence. Now, of course, if God can create the rock, there's something he cannot do, which is lift it. 
And of course, if God couldn't create such a rock, then again, there's something he can't do, which, create, which is create the rock. So either way, then, God cannot uh, do something, and so he is, he is not unlimited in his power, right? So this suggests that maybe the very idea of omnipotence is impossible. And so, of course, then maybe God isn't, uh, isn't omnipotent in that sense, okay? So that is the first response to the argument from evil. Secondly, maybe we could deny God's holy goodness or omnibenevolence, right? Think, for example, right, why, why, why might we think this? Well, think, for example, about the Bible. <clears throat> there, are, there are quite a lot of stories in the Bible where God doesn't really seem that good. In fact, God seems more concerned with something like fairness or being just, right? Consider stories like Sodom and Gomorrah or the Great Flood, right? where God seems to be kind of punishing humanity, right? Trying to teach humanity a lesson, right? So maybe instead of God being maximally good, maybe God is maximally just instead, for example. So maybe this is a reason, again, to deny um, God's holy goodness, right? Third, maybe we could just deny the very existence of evil, right? So, in, in philosophy, there is this position called moral nihilism. Moral nihilism is just a denial of morality. It's the suggestion that morality itself isn't real, doesn't really exist. It's not part of the fabric of the universe. Now, why might we think that morality isn't real? Well, consider, for example, that morality seems to be, you know, sort of relative to the culture, right? What's moral... And this culture in America is very different from what's moral in other parts of the world. Now, that might suggest then, of course, that morality isn't real at all, that it's sort of just kind of in our discussion of the universe, right? It's not really in the universe at all. It's just about or in the way we talk about the universe, human beings, right? Further, though, can just consider the fact that Consider the possibility that humanity, that human beings weren't even here on this planet. It's kind of weird to think about how there could be morality in that case. What place would morality have in the universe if human beings weren't even here, right? Consider, for example, something simple like if you look out into, um, you know, sort of the, the animal kingdom, right? If you look out into the animal kingdom, you have, say, a lion hunting an antelope or a, a bear hunting something for dinner like a, uh, you know, like a little critter or a fish or something else, right? In the animal kingdom, we don't really see morality. I, I don't think we do, right? Uh, you have a lion hunting an antelope for food, right? It's survival. It's the nature of the lion to kill uh, and it's the nature of the antelope to try to avoid being killed by the lion. So the morality there just doesn't seem to be present. It's more about survival. It's more about nature, right? And if you consider that, that fact, right, and then if you take away human beings, again, it seems like maybe without human beings, morality seems to, seems to evaporate, right? And so this suggests that maybe morality isn't real at all, which suggests then, of course, that maybe evil isn't real, right? It's maybe evil instead is maybe just in, uh, you know, in us in terms of how we, uh, you know, kind of um, talk about the universe. We talk about things being wrong and evil and moral, but maybe that's all it is. It's just in our talk, right? It's in our conceptual repertoire without really being in the fabric of the universe. Lastly, another uh, reason to think that evil isn't real is just to consider uh, and compare the idea of morality with something like color or, or weight or height, right? If you look at properties like height or weight or color, scientifically those can be measured, right? For example, something like height, we can take uh, you know, something as simple as a tape measure and gauge that height. Right? We can measure it. But now if you consider something like morality, there's no such measure, no such scientific means for capturing right, and measuring that, that morality. In fact, a lot of times morality seems like it's just in our gut. You know, it feels wrong emotionally. Right? It, we, we maybe sometimes are grabbed by something like compassion or pity. Right? And that's what 
tells us that something is wrong, right? Or that we need to, we need to help, right? And so, scientifically speaking, morality feels a lot different than uh, other things that can be measured, you know, that we know to be in the universe, which suge suggests, again, that maybe morality really isn't in the universe at all. It's not part of the fabric of the, of the universe, right? Now, uh, our next reply, uh, possible reply to the argument from evil, is, uh, <coughs> is Mackey's claim that uh, if God is um, omnibenevolent, holy good, then <clears throat> he would prevent all evil from occurring, right? He wouldn't allow it to occur. But maybe the reply here is really simple. Maybe just God allows some evil to occur because it could result in much, much more good, right? We call this uh, response to the argument from evil the means-ends theodicy. And so you might, for example, say that God could use some evil as a means to teach humanity a lesson, right? So, for example, the story of Noah and the Great Flood could be just such an example. Maybe uh, some, you know, a, a kind of evil like a flood could be used as a lesson to teach uh, humanity some, something, something greater, right? And if you apply this kind of reasoning, you can sort of see out in the world, right, in history, human history, all sorts of um, occurrences, events, that uh, humanity has learned from, you know? So if you take, for example, natural disasters, uh, you know, uh, there was an earthquake that occurred in Haiti, right? And so many people died because the housing in Haiti was built so poorly, right? And this suggests that maybe the lesson to have learned there is that the housing, right, we need to make uh, and build houses that can withstand the force of an earthquake, right? Maybe that's the lesson. Another really simple one I like to consider is the tsunami that occurred in Japan, Right? And of course, this tsunami was a great disaster because it uh, led to uh, all this worry about, um, well, of course, so much death and destruction, but uh, then it led to this worry about this, this nuclear power plant that was in Japan and, and kind of the, um, you know, the destruction of that would, of course, cause, have such gr so much greater implications uh, and, and side effects for humanity, right? And of course, this maybe suggests the really simple point that uh, you know, quite simply, we shouldn't be building a nuclear power point where or a nuclear power plant where uh, something like a tsunami is so likely. You know, um, we need to be a bit more careful about where we put those things, right? Okay. So uh, <coughs> the next uh, the next uh, uh, response then that we could give to the argument from evil comes in the idea of freedom of the will. Right? And of course, freedom of the will uh, might be a great explanation for why uh, so much moral evil has occurred in the world. Right? Moral evil has occurred in the world because human, me human beings make bad choices on occasion. Right? Now you might ask, well, yeah, but then why wouldn't God just take away that, that freedom? And the point might be really simple that that uh, maybe God thought it more valuable that human beings have freedom of the will than the fact that from that freedom, evil might result, right? Maybe the freedom is more valuable than the evil that can result from it. Now, of course, Mackey gives this really quite compelling and interesting response to that point. He says, well, look, if God is all-powerful, then why couldn't God have made human beings such that they were free, but at the same time created a world in which human beings always free, freely choose what's right and what's good. So it's a world in which Mackey considers a world in which God made human beings free and yet didn't ever do the wrong thing, didn't ever bring about evil, right? And uh, it's, uh, it's, again, quite a compelling response. How you would respond to Mackey here is, is a bit unclear, I think. Usually, uh, the way my students go is that they'll say something like, well, look, if, if Mackey, or sorry, if God is granting human beings freedom and yet 
somehow making a world, a universe in which we're always choosing the right path, it almost seems like he's taking away our freedom at that same time, right? How could, of course, God create human beings that are free and yet somehow that also always freely choose what's right? You know, it seems a bit of a contradiction, right? A world in which we always do right seems like also a world in which we're not free. So that seems to be a bit of a problem for Mackey. Uh, I, I'm not sure it's, it's um, the strongest, though, because Mackey's right to point out that if God is truly omnipotent, right, if God can truly make anything possible, then God could make it possible that we are both free and also always choosing what's right, right? So, uh, so this seems to be Mackey's response, and I think it's, it's a good one. But uh, Okay, well, that'll do it for today. I think that's, uh, that's it for the uh, lecture here on the argument from evil. Hope you enjoyed it, and thank you so much for watching.